Hello everyone, I'm David, I'm a candidate master, I've been playing chess for 10 years now, and I will be playing a game today. What's what's the special thing? What I will be analyzing, I will be explaining every single move I make, and I will be also thinking about what my opponent wants to play. I'm gonna talk about the opening, the middle game, the end game, strategy, plans, pawn breaks, tactics, etc. What you, your job, sorry, your job should be asking yourself those same questions and comparing what you think with what I think, and then we can all learn and be happy forever. Let's go. So we're searching for a game. You should always keep hydrated because without water, then you're going to be very, your brain is going to be um, not functioning as well. Okay, my opponent plays d4, occupying the, oh sorry, occupying the center. Well done. So what I'm going to play is, I'm going to play c5. And you're gonna th many of you are going to be very confused because, oh, David, you just blundered a pawn. Well, this is what happens. I'm going to play e5 now. So this pawn was taken, but in exchange, I'm going to get the center. Now, my opponent played knight c3, developing pieces, which is a good move. And now, the, the pawn I sacrificed in move one is going to be taken by my bishop. Now, that's not only the reason why I play bishop takes e5. The second reason why I play bishop takes e5 is because I know that I have to take out my bishops and knights. So bishop takes e5 is a very good move. It's doing two things. It's getting back the pawn and it's taking out the bishop, getting ready to castle. My opponent plays knight f3, attacking the pawn, so I'm going to defend the pawn with knight c6. And yeah, it's interesting. My opponent plays e3, so now this bishop is not very happy. Interesting. I, I would think that my opponent plays e, play, would play e4, sorry. And then this bishop would be happy because it has many options. Well, not this one, sorry. But after e3, which is what my opponent played just now, then this bishop is a little bit more sad. You have to make most of your pieces happy. This is what we call speaking to your pieces. You have to ask every single piece. You have to imagine that they're your children or your, your villagers. And you have to think, well, soldiers, um, where would you like to be? And this bishop on c1 is going to be a little bit angry because that soldier has nowhere to go. So you have to talk to your pieces. You have to ask them where they want to go. My opponent plays bishop b5. Yeah. So the first thing that comes to my mind is, well, this knight is defending this pawn. So if bishop goes to b5, then this bishop is attacking this, this knight. And if, if I play castles, then this bishop might take the knight and then I lose this pawn. Yeah. But then I think a little bit more deep than that. And I think, well, is there any way I can compensate or sacrifice the pawn? What do I gain in exchange of, of losing the pawn? I must gain something. And um, in this case, I don't think it's worth sacrificing the pawn. So what I will do is I will defend the pawn with d6. Now, this is a double, it has a double, it, there's two, two meanings, two purposes. It's a double purpose move. It's defending the, the pawn on e5. And I'm ready to take out this bishop on c8. Now I get the question, should I take out the bishop first or should I castle? Well, I think I should castle first because king priority or the king safety, sorry, is the highest priority. So I'm going to I'm gonna castle first and then after that I can take out the bishop on c8. So all my pieces are pretty good. I like this position. Now this bishop is a little bit of a problem. Maybe my, my opponent has to fianchito, fianchetto, sorry, the bishop. But I think, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I was going to say maybe e4 has to be played anyway and just accept that e3 was a pawn to e3 was a mistake in the first place. But my plan plays a3 and I think this is a very common problem that many people have when they don't know what to do in the middle game because this is the middle game already. We're no longer in the opening. This is the middle game. They don't know what to do and they start moving pawns in the flank and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not good. What you have to see is, what structure do we have? Is it an open structure or a closed structure? In this case, it's a little bit of a semi-open structure. So the game is kind of dynamic. When the game is dynamic, you want to look for aggressive moves, like bishop g4. So in this case, my, my opponent played a neutral move. It's not doing anything, or not doing much, let's say. And when your opponent makes a, a neutral move, then you can attack. Because attacking is generally the way you win in, in chess. Of course, of course, attacking is the way you win in chess. That's no secret. Now in this position, played bishop e2, I'm gonna make, uh, now I'm gonna make a neutral move. Because h6 has a, an advantage, I want my king to have a window now. My opponent plays b4, I'm gonna defend my bishop. So bishop b6, good move. Defending my bishop. If my opponent attacks, I defend. It's very, very common. I've, I've explained this in the other videos. My opponent is now attacking this, I'm gonna defend. 
I move away. Now my, my next plan is going to put this rook in the semi-open file. Because this bishop is attacking c2. Oh, my opponent attacks, I defend. And what I was saying is, this rook on c8 is going to be um, pressuring the knight on c3. Oh well, look, I don't want this bishop to go, so I, I defend. And people are going to say, David, you're, you're defending, you're defending, you're probably losing. Well, no, look, my, my opponent already blundered. I take this, and this pawn was hanging already. Although I shouldn't have taken that way. That was a little bit of a blunder, yeah. Yeah, because my opponent now takes this, and this pawn is hanging. Oh, but he took with the wrong one. Now I get to pin the queen. I have three seconds, so I, that's why I'm playing fast. I'm going to explain this better when we analyze the game. I think the only move for my opponent in this position is knight b5. But it might be losing too. Okay, so my opponent blunders. Now I get to take this. The bishop can't take because the rook, the rook is pinning the bishop. The queen would be hanging. So I've lost, like, sorry, my opponent lost a knight. I'm going to take this. When I'm winning, I'm going to trade as many pieces as I can. Um, that's something we talked about in the last video. I'm going to take this pawn because it's weak. And everything is now just about conversion. So now I play this. I attack two things at the same time. That's called a fork. And the only the only way I see white trying to save this game is 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 making the most of this pin maybe or trying to attack my king but I think I think white is just losing too many pieces now. And when when you're winning in chess you shouldn't relax. That's one thing that we should talk about. My opponent sacrifices the The, sorry, sorry if I go silent for sometimes. My opponent sacrificed the exchange, so that the sacrificing the exchange is giving up a rook for, in this case, a knight. And a rook is five points, a knight is three points, so that wouldn't be, that's not a good deal, let's say. So my opponent was a little bit desperate, and eventually I should be able to win this game. And one very easy way of winning, win, winning, winning games, let's say, is by exchanging as many pieces as you can. So my opponent is already doing the, doing me a favor by ex exchanging the bishop for for a knight. Now look at this move. This move has very a very clear idea. I have two rooks, my opponent has one. So to make my life easier, I'm going to trade the last rook my opponent has. And there's no way my opponent could have avoided that. And in this position, I just have a rook. I'm just going to start cleaning up. I'm going to take the pawns. And once... Yeah, once those two pawns disappear, I'm going to queen my own pawns, and it's going to be an easy win. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that was instructive, and I hope you learned something. You should check out my other videos. They're pretty funny. You should subscribe, and um, thank you.